as there is now more uh, treatments available for metastatic head and neck or metastatic thyroid cancer, we've sort of changed from the olden days where thyroid cancer is really managed by endocrinologists and early on surgeons. And now it's actually more of a multidisciplinary disease where medical oncologists are involved, radiation oncologists are also involved, and it's important to have everyone on the same team or the same side trying to figure out what is the best next step for the patient. Because now there often is more than one step to choose between surgery, radiation, systemic therapy, uh, radioactive iodine. At an academic center, this is done a little bit easier because we've already have this set up often in head and neck cancers and other cancers where we have disease management teams set up. The, we meet at least you know once a week. We talk about the different cases or more complicated cases, and everyone sort of comes to a consensus of what we think is sort of the best way to move forward with the patient. And what are the options that exist for, for each individual case? This also involves pathologists, involves nuclear medicine physicians, it involves radiologists. So it's a very, it involves dentists at times. It's a very large group of people trying to make a decision. And it is something that you see more in an academic center than you actually see in private practice. I think, you know, in the past when it was really just endocrinologists trying to determine how to give radioactive iodine, it was, it was easier to do this out in a private practice setting. But now you almost need to do this in more of an academic or a collaborative group to try to really figure out how to move forward in each, as each stage of the disease happens for each individual patient. Multidisciplinary management of thyroid cancer patients is very important. It's a low prevalent disease, especially uh, patients with advanced uh, thyroid cancer are very complicated and difficult to manage. So I could not do my work without multidisciplinary meetings. And those meetings consist of um, uh, endocrinologists, oncologists, surgeons, radiologists, nuclear medicine specialists, and external irradiation specialists. The pathologist also uh, takes part in those meetings, as do nurses and psychologists. And we meet weekly, and uh, I think this is the uh, backbone of thyroid cancer management. The presence of an oncologist in the multidisciplinary setting is essential, even in patients who are not treated already with uh, oncological drugs. Because the way of thinking, the expertise of oncologists um, really is helpful in uh, discussing the risk of patients, the management of patients, discussing whether treatment should be curative or palliative, uh, determining uh, growth rates of cancer. Uh, this is all the field of oncology and I think the presence of oncologists in that respect is very important and worthwhile. So as in all multidisciplinary settings, uh, it's rather complicated to get together so many experts. Uh, they're all occupied with their uh, own specialties and their work. So it really has to be a formal setting. Without a formal uh, setting, it's not possible to, uh, to do this management properly. So in our hospital, those are formal meetings. There are secretaries, they take place at regular times and all, uh, um, all colleagues are expected to be present because otherwise we cannot do our work. And this is essential for the continuity of the uh, multidisciplinary treatment. So I think that the first thing to know is that every institution is different and they have different expertise and they have different people who are really focusing on the care of these patients. And even to some extent, there actually are differences in whether, say, an endocrinologist will be giving systemic therapy like the kinase inhibitors or whether that's done by an oncologist. But let's assume that it's the model that an endocrinologist does the early treatment and the oncologist does the systemic therapy. They do need to work together. Now, for years, our institution, I think, works fairly well together by really communicating by phone. Most of the time, we pick up the phone and we talk to each other directly about each case. And I would say that a multidisciplinary clinic or, or meeting does not necessarily replace that. There's no replacement for actual direct communication with the phys among the physicians. However, one of the things that we've experienced at our center just since we started having a, literally a molecular, um, multidisciplinary meeting 
once a month is that it really does help us to discuss the patients that fall a little bit in the gray zones between whether or not a certain kind of therapy is appropriate. It might come up, for instance, if a patient's had a couple of rounds of radioactive iodine, we're not really confident that the next round will help. Should we do it again or should we do a different modality? Then it's really great to have the nuclear medicine uh, doctors in the room as well as the endocrinologists and the oncologists. There have been interesting cases where we've recently had patients who have been presenting who had very complicated presentations and maybe the surgeon didn't even feel confident that the surgery was gonna go well, it was gonna be very morbid for the patient, then we might discuss sort of rearranging the order of some of the therapies based on a specific uh, instance. So these are things that I think that we benefit by meeting together in a group because then often it saves us one, state, sending the patient to five different appointments. Maybe the patient sees one doctor, they can present the radiology and the tumor case and get the input and then maybe go directly to the physician who will take the next step in their care. I think at this point in time, usually at least once, I think the disease is changing quite a bit. There are a lot of options that exist. And, you know, while there hasn't been as much studies about patient volume in term in thyroid cancer, this has been done enough in enough other cancers that for a rare or uncommon cancer like or REI, refractory thyroid cancer, it, it's important that people who see a lot of this disease at least weigh in on when someone should actually start treatment, what are the different treatment options that exist, and even more importantly, what clinical trials exist. So even though we have a lot more treatments available today than we did two decades ago, at the same time, we're, we're nowhere near close where we really need to be in terms of the treatment of thyroid cancer. And there's a lot of studies going on to try to further advance the field. And it's important that patients get access to this.